Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Grab your throttle, hold on tight for the lab podcast we have tonight. Oh yeah. Here we are. Welcome back, all our fellow bikeaholics. Appreciate you making the return. This is the podcast for the motorcycling majority, the big MM, the 99%. Attaboy. Yes, sir. We have got a packed show for you guys. Welcome back. This is Ryan Erlacher your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your, and your, high tech redneck, attaboy, in the house with me uh, is the one, the only uh, studio left is Oscar, Oscar, how you doing? Living the dream. Well, good, um, I'm not going to lie to you, dude, it's uh, just us two tonight, I got a little something for us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Uh-huh. We can do it. That's right. Building castles, Building castles in, the in the sky. Just the two of us. You and I. Just you and I, Oscar. I love it. We look for love, no time for tea. There you go. So what uh yeah, what what's going on, man? What's new? Give me give me something new. Ad lib. We might have some snow tomorrow. I didn't put my chains on my bike, and so I don't know if I'm gonna ride. Yeah. Are we supposed to have snow tomorrow, dude? Seriously? Right. That sucks. A lot. It was actually halfway... Really? I have not even looked at the weather, man. I, I wouldn't lie about something like that. We can make it if we All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're going nowhere with that, dude. All right. Welcome, everybody. And uh, yeah, awesome to have you all here. We do have an awesome, awesome episode for you. I will kick it off right here at the beginning, and I am super stoked. The new... Um, you know what, Oscar? We did not even set a timer for the studio. You aware of that? Wait a minute. Wait for it. All right. Do you have a timer? Ready? To get... Go. There you go. That way you can give me the sign sign when we're getting close. Um, so yeah, uh, it has been, well, this week it's been fairly nice around here. Uh, at least a couple days to ride motorcycles. But, you get like uh, a little teaser of sun, 50 degree weather, and then oh it's falling from the sky the white stuff yep bunch of garbage we we were lucky the first part of the season um because it was kind of mellow um from what we're used to but anyways i am i've been working hard in the studio guys and i will tell you that i um i finally got done it was highly requested it was uh highly requested that is a new video and i will tell you that i put in literally and I was talking to Oscar uh, about this over dinner. What do you think of my dinner, dude? It was delicious. What was it? Healthy. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, you mean what did yeah. we eat? What did you eat, dude? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, like you ate a- two eggs, of them, dude. Eggs and yeah, you know, some ham and vegetables. I cooked some bad arse omelets uh, tonight, and uh, uh, cooked them up for Oscar. Ham and, and, ham and cheese them. and mushrooms and onions and tomatoes and you name it, dude. I had it. Big old fluffy omelets, dude. I got a trick. Yeah. You used the whole stove. I did. It was very um, ecologically friendly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You didn't waste anything. And that was a new... I haven't cooked omelets for the other guys yet, so now they're going to be wanting omelets. But I spent about 50... And I will tell you guys this. I know it's hard to explain um, to everybody when, when I'm doing this, but... It literally takes me, especially this new video that I did, um, at least 50 hours um, to, to do it. And so, you know, these videos, I just wanted you guys to know I try to do them when I can, but I literally spent, I had four days off and I spent 13 hours um, every day on my days off in the studio here um, recording and then you got to edit and then I have to... Um, boy, once you edit, then I've got to do graphic design for the cover. I've got to get them uploaded to different places. Then I've got to do my, uh, emails and, uh, and on and on and on. And literally it takes, and that's just working really hard. Uh, so I got about 50 hours into this new video. I am super pleased with how it turned out. It's already selling, um, a a lot of copies and it is 
the highly requested lawabidingbiker.com forward slash ride planner. It is the how-to video complete guide on using the new ride planner. Um, and that is the ride planner is free in, uh, it's basically, uh, obviously in the, uh, Harley Davidson site. Um, they have it embedded in there. It's their deal. The cool thing about the ride planner is it's free. Even if you don't ride a Harley, you can use it. It doesn't matter what kind of bike you ride. You just set up a free account with Harley username and password, and you get access to the ride planner. And if you don't know what the ride planner, do you know what the ride planner is there, Oscar? Do you know anything about this? I can barely work my heated grips. Uh, I know. Do you know what the, do you have, have you ever been in it at no. all? Really? Just what uh, the, the occasional, what LD sends out. Okay. So basically ride planner in a nutshell, and I strongly encourage you to, to get the video. Um, it is uh, very thorough. I do a ton of screen recordings of my uh, computer monitor. So it's basically like you're sitting on my lap in the studio. Considering the music you played earlier, <laughs> I don't want our listening audience to get the wrong impression. I agree. I'm not sitting on your lap. No. No, right. Okay. But, you know, and so I, I do this video and it, it is very detailed screen recordings and I zoom into stuff. It's just, I really spent a lot of time on this thing. And once we get done with all the screen recording and you learn all how to plan a ride on Hardy Ride Planner, it doesn't matter even if you were driving a car, obviously, but you basically can plan your ride. Uh, you can uh, drop blocks where you want to start. You can drop waypoints from point A to point B. And then if there's a certain road that you want to ride, then you can drag your waypoints and you can go to uh, uh, curvy roads if you want or whatever, and it adds time to your ride. You can see how long it is, how many hours for each day. Um, it's really, really endless what you can do in there. You can name your waypoints. It's really a, uh, um, oh, real, yeah, within that, you can also book, if you don't care if you stay in Best Western, which I don't, Harley has a deal with Best Western, and you can book your hotels right at your waypoints right in the planner. I show you how to do all this. It's a whole community in there too. People share rides with each other. All the rides I create, I share with people. Other people share. So you can take their ride and then you can combine it into yours. People uh, put really cool rides and really cool roads. And then not only that, then you can manipulate their ride to your, uh, uh, how you know, if you want to cut it down on time or whatever. It's just endless. But it, it's quite a big, uh, uh, there, there's a learning curve to it. And I had had a lot of requests for it. So I finally made the video. And it is a complete, if you've guys seen any of my YouTube videos or purchased any of my other videos, YouTube channel is just yeah, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash scrappy, or just, no, correction, forward slash YouTube. That'll take you right to it. My YouTube channel is scrappy587. So anyways, it's out there, guys. If Just go to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash ride planner. And of course, it goes right in line with forward slash boombox, which is the complete guide to the boombox system, the Harley Davidson boombox infotainment system, which has sold a ton of copies. And then, of course, the follow up that's selling a ton of copies too, which is lawabidingbiker.com forward slash boombox software, all about how to update your maps. Um, it is a computer, Oscar, and it needs to be updated just like your iPhone. Your well, smartphone? What I was going to tell the listening yeah, audience, ahead. which is what it's important for them to know uh, <laughs> oh, good. that you're not purdy, but you are thorough. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's the biggest selling point, I think. Yep. Very, there you go. Straight from Oscar. You heard it. So it's out there, guys. And uh, yeah, what do you say about that, dude? Ride Planner. It got requested by a ton of people. And like I say, 50 hours in the studio. And it is an actual product for sale now. With that many hours in, you didn't get a single nap during the day, did you? I did not. And in fact, today was my first day. It's my last day off before I go back to my regular job. And I was going to take a nap. And I seriously, dude, I was sitting here at the desk. And that's something else I want to talk about. Dude, the emails, the video, you know, selling some videos. And I do appreciate the support, guys. And you can think of buying the videos as you're getting something hopefully very valuable but you're also helping out um, subsidize the Law Abiding Biker podcast, which are all for free. Um, so if you buy those videos, you're getting something, and uh, and we're getting something. So I, I get a lot of nap time. Yeah, because I can't do fancy stuff with <laughs> it must computers be computers nice. <laughs> and stuff. Uh, whatever. I sell AMS oil. I do. 
Except I don't have a website and or a computer or a, <laughs> you have a tell me, dude. But, seriously, I never asked you that. What do you have a computer in your home? People can send mail order stuff in a phone that has a cord. You push the buttons, dude. Do you seriously tell me? Do you have a computer in your house? I, Be honest. I do. I have a computer. PC, right? I haven't used it for a long time. It is a PC. Uh huh. That's what I would expect from you. Easy. <laughs> um, at least you got smart and got an iPhone. And I can't live without it. It's too bad. Mine's broken now. I got to get a new one. So, yep. There we go. You do. Um, but no, that's good that you have a computer, bro. Um, I, does it work? It's a, uh, uh, what was that called? They came out in 89. Yeah, dude. Whatever. Uh, it works. I turn it on. And, yeah? And uh, Do you look at lawabitingbiker.com? Duh. And yeah, there you go. Who doesn't? So we were having a talk. Um, yeah, dude, if you ever want to sell your AMS oil, I'll just put it on Law Biting Biker, make an extra page for you, dude, and you can get it. You can sell it through there or something. I really should I'll help come you. Into the, I know. I know. You're good about that. I should come into the 21st century. Yeah, that would be nice. 80s are not dead. So I have, um, we have, which is really exciting, the upcoming anniversary, guys, of the Lab um, podcast. And super stoked about that. I'm not going to get a lot into it um, here on this podcast because it is coming up. I don't know exactly what special we're going to do, but it's going to be a awesome episode. I can tell you that because I'm going to put some uh, extra time into it. My first episode, do you know when that was, Oscar? Oh, wow. My very first episode by myself in my daughter's closet. Like I said, I'm not going to get a ton into it. Most of our loyal listeners know the history and have listened since episode one, but uh, it's gotten a lot different, our podcast, from my starting days. I just had to start it, and that's what they say. You got to get it started and just get it out there, and then you can uh, you just keep getting better and better, hopefully. It's improved significantly. I remember the first or second one. That was, wow. I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah. It, well, March 16th of 2013. So our anniversary date will be March 16th of 2014. And that'll be our one year. And I really want to talk about a lot of the stuff we've done, where we're at, um, how we've progressed. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else we'll do, but I'll at least have two other people in the studio with me and should be a good time. And actually, I'm going to record it and I'll make sure and it will release on March 16th. I just have to. It's kind of like a, uh, I don't know, when you a little like lucky a, charm. Unlike a traditional anniversary, no one has to buy you any jewelry. Mm. Send you flowers. Very true. Or ice cream and chocolate. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very or true. Or any of the other stuff that goes along with that. Yep. Very true. Um, so, yeah, that will be our anniversary day. And uh, I don't know if you're available, Oscar, but at least have two people on the mics that day. So, that's coming up, guys. Stay tuned for that. Um, wow. Oh, I have a new. Uh, so, I release a lot of free videos too. I released, you know what my latest free video was there, Oscar? I released a new for purchase video, which is lawbitingbiker.com forward slash ride planner and i explained that a little bit well i also threw out a new i've thrown out several video releases but this is the one i want to hit on today and that is the illuminator jacket Uh uh-huh it is the harley davidson illumination 360 functional jacket and if you want to see that it's a full blog and video review that i did and just go to lawbitingbiker.com forward slash harley illumination jacket now i will ask you this oscar have you tried uh, now do you wear a leather coat or do you wear other materials because I, before this jacket I wore uh, all leather of course my cut uh, my sworn few MC cut will always be leather but how about you know riding in cold and stuff what are you wearing I just want to clarify that you are asking me if I wear nylons uh, yes uh, the illuminator jackets if you want to wear just, those I'm just saying cut, it's dude, nylon I'm yeah. just saying that's all yeah well so what are you wearing right now dude a black t-shirt, blue jeans. Yeah, but what do you wear for cold uh, weather? I, <laughs> well, you, I I can't remember, dude. Because we um, when we hit over in cold weather, what are you wearing leather. under your cut? What do you have? Mm, the Harley. I don't remember the name of the coat. But it's a Harley leather coat. Yeah, it is. Give me a quick review on your leather jacket. What you think? Because I was leather always before. Because I knew nothing else. Like I say, with a cut, we'll stay leather. But <laughs> I've seen some pictures. 
<laughs> what picture? <laughs> It, it, it was leather and you were wearing nothing. Else. Oh, you're but talking about my leather shaft. That, that was totally different. <laughs> and I don't. So in, so in the That's review, leather and lace. If it never, the video never shows below your waist because you're only wearing the. It's leather and jacket. lace. <laughs> that's not, saying. That's not right. Just saying. That is not right. Um, I, you know, when I first, I got a Honda. I know, metric thing. Mm-hmm, in 2010, mm-hmm. and I had a nothing uh, wrong with that. We support all motorcycles here at Law Abiding Biker Media. I had the V6 a lot of our guys. Uh, LD wrote. Sorry, to interrupt. LD yeah. wrote. A, uh, wasn't it a Honda before he got a Harley? Yamaha. Yeah, Yamaha. That's Yamaha. right. So yeah, we support them all. Whatever, dude. I had the um, I had a, a nice Tour Master nylon jacket, and it was fine. It, I didn't really. I'd always been a leather fan, but leather gets a little expensive. So I thought I'll try nylon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when I finally got a Harley, my wife. Uh, for my birthday the year the next year got me this really nice harley leather coat and after comparing the two i'm gonna stick with leather and what i noticed about the leather was uh surprisingly enough hot weather cold weather it was more versatile than the nylon so i didn't wear my yeah, what do you mean versatile <laughs> that's a big word that is a big Vers- word for you versatile. versatile yeah um sorry go ahead i thought you didn't have a farm <laughs> That's not right. Versatile. versatile. Define what you mean by leather is more versatile than... And my jacket is that nylon, by the way. It goes with your nylons. Well, whatever, but it's not nylon, dude. He was like, oh, you wear nylons under your jeans. That's cutting edge like, material. You're still, you're still wearing nylons under your jeans. <laughs> the, the nylon in the summer or spring... Not nylon, but whatever. It, it's nylon. Well, it's, 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 it's... Yeah. It's textile. It's nylon. Right. It's got whatever it's like Gore-Tex dude it's got it's water repellent and stuff but yeah go ahead you can call whatever you if want. that's the last time you check dude on <laughs> it's uh it's cutting edge materials dude <laughs> they're sheer dude yeah and if you wear them under your pants they're not silk come on <laughs> they like you know and have you tried one seriously yes okay. i'm telling you I had, right. a, I had a nice i thought you were just making it up no no, no. i had a All nice right. tour master with the um, zip out liner, and you need, we leave here in Eastern Washington in the spring. It can be forty degrees in the afternoon. It'd be seventy, and in the seventy, the nylon jacket got pretty hot, and I would end up shedding it and putting a sweatshirt on. And you don't have to do that with your leather. No, I was whatever. Really su- I, I'm serious. I was really surprised. It came with kind of a chintzy vest liner thing. I just took that out. And Did was, you get pleather? Not leather. You probably got pleather, dude. Dude, why you got tell everyone? <laughs> Go ahead. I was trying finish to finish your story. We're gonna keep a secret. <laughs> I can't now. I'm offended. All right, that's different. So I, your leather jacket is cooler than a, a jacket like the Harley Illumination jacket that, that has vents in it and mesh and all kinds of stuff. It has a Are broader you stick to that heat, story. It has a broader heat range. <laughs> Knock it off. All right. So really, no. I'm being serious. So you're saying you you prefer leather over the new. Um, cutting edge materials that they're coming out with cutting edge. It was like in the seventies, they came out with that design. All right. I'm pulling it up right now. Lawbitingbiker.com <laughs> forward slash Harley illumination jacket. Cause I'm going to read my blog. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but, um, it has built in nitrex EVO, which is kind of cool. The protectors, um, for the shoulders and elbows. Um, I don't really care about that, but Hey, if you go down, Hey, what does that what the CE heck? stand for? What does what stand for? C E. Where, where are you looking at? It's the uh, the label they give to the uh, shoulder and elbow protectors. Oh, so I don't, it says C E approved. Like my Harley came. I yeah. don't. Mine doesn't say C E approved, dude. No, the 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 armor you can put in the your coat has pockets in the shoulders and the right. It's got protectors in there, dude. Can't so take the, them out. The armor is called or Harley uses C E approved. No, armor. they call it Nitrex EVO Impact no, Protectors. You now you can't even spell Nitrex. <laughs> I did on my blog, dude. Oh, wow. Okay, so the garment is waterproof, preventing water from penetrating and keeping you dry while riding in moderate to heavy rain. And I have ridden it in rain, and it does keep you very dry. Um, and it stayed, yeah, it stayed completely dry and warm for me. Um, let's see. It, like I say, it's got the vent strategic. And I just want you guys to know, I'm just telling you about the jacket. I have no affiliation whatsoever with this jacket or any company. I, I truly just bought this with my own hard-earned money. And... Uh, I did a full review and blog on it for you guys. Um, I will give them. I was impressed with it. I I actually was. I didn't think I would switch from a leather coat, dude. I honestly didn't. I was a leather guy all the way. And I I finally said, I'm going to give this new technology, um, you know, a try. It's here's the deal. Um, It's, it's just for me, it's, it's got, it does provide added protection. It's more flexible. That's the big key to me. 
is if it didn't work as well, okay, I'll, I'll lose some flexibility. But uh, dude, it is so flexible compared to leather. It doesn't bind you up. It's rainproof. And I'm not lying, dude. It is way warmer because it's got that liner and stuff, zip out liner. It's if, you, if you're bound up, a little fiber will help that. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, technology I'll, has come a long way on these types I'll, of jackets. I'll give the nylon some love. Well, the, the Tour Master I had, they're still making it. I had it in 2010. In the cold and in the rain, it was superior to my leather coat. Because we've ridden right. in some hard rains when we were in Yellowstone. And the leather jacket, and I've ridden in some rains like that. The leather jacket eventually soaks all the way through. The nylon won't. True. But what I'm saying is I leave on a dry day in the morning at 40 with the nylon and in the afternoon at 70 the nylon was too hot even with the liner zipped out well if it's 70 you're not even wearing the stinking jacket you're wearing your cut i was what are you doing i was leaving the house it was cold in the morning i put a coat on then well, i put it put it in your saddlebag dude if no, it's 70 i'm not wearing this thing this is for cold weather man 70 is kind of cold well i'm just saying dude i so it uh i was uh pretty impressed with it anyways um it's it's modern in weight it's not as heavy as leather um it, you know and the cut over it is fine uh it it, it works fine and uh it's like having a brown belt and black shoes right <laughs> it uh yeah and it, it's priced anyways i got it for 280 it's, way cheaper than leather yes two, 280 to 350 most places want it i'll give it and i try to work out it or yeah it, we won't even get into that but it, it, it just shop around um but it is made out of the you know the 3m insulate Insulate insulation. Um, it's got the protectors in it. it it's uh, yeah, I'm I'm sold. And I honestly, like I say, I have no affiliation, so you guys, I, I can't even direct you where to buy it. Um, but anyways, it's got the vents in it. It's got the zip out liner, and I'm pretty stoked with it. It is waterproof, man. I was riding some 18 degree days, and I use my uh, first gear heated gear underneath, dude, and it just locks that heat in. Yeah, and yeah. I'll give it props for the cold weather. Yeah, that's what I I'm will. saying. I but I don't absolutely give it props for the cold weather. But even when I have my leather coat, I didn't wear. I'm not wearing my leather coat in 70. To, you know, I'll wear a, a sweatshirt and my cut. You know, stuff like that. If it's colder, you know, in the mornings or something. But this is the only time I use this thing is when it's really cold out or really wet. So I don't know. I don't. I didn't wear my leather coat when it was warm out. So I guess I don't have any. I guess I don't have any comparison because if it's warm out, I'm not wearing we'll any see, coat. You can't really give a full review. <laughs> oh, I did uh, for crying out loud. So you're going to write, then you write, once you write a blog on your leather coat, dude, and I'll put it on here. I'll just say the blog right now. Yeah, go ahead. This is a verbal blog. I just did. I was like, the leather has a wider. <laughs> you, do you even ring. know the model of your coat, dude? It's the, uh -huh. the, the coat. It's black. No, I don't know. I don't remember <laughs> the model off the top of my head. I put it on and I ride around. So anyways, guys, if you want to see that, I did spend a lot of time on it. If you're thinking whether you want to switch from leather to the new uh, uh, fabrics that they're making, the, the waterproof fabrics and stuff and the insulations and different things. But it is lawabitingbiker.com forward slash, what is it, Harley Davidson? Was it Harley Davidson Illuminator. Illumination? Yeah. Oh, it's Harley, yeah, forward slash Harley Illumination Jacket. And it is a blog. And like I say, there is a full video at the bottom of the blog. And uh, yeah, check it out if you're thinking about switching or if you want to switch. I made the switch and I'm very happy. I'm not going back to a leather coat. Can I have your old leather coat? Uh, my kids? Sold on eBay. Oh, man. Dude, that's how I roll. That is how I roll. My kids would have worn that. That's Dude, not right. Where did my show notes go? Okay, here they are. All right. Um, yeah, so check that out, guys. Um, and uh, see what you think. See what you think if you want to make the switch or not. Um, but that is all free and uh, spent a lot of time on that, putting it out for you guys and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Very cool thing. Why don't you, you know anything about the email club? Did you get my email, recent email on the email club, dude? No. You didn't get it last night? I sent it out on the new ride planner video. Oh, uh, I didn't open the ride planner video. Okay. Well, um, anyways, guys, I will tell you this real quick. Um, I finally got an email club. It is completely free. It doesn't cost a dime. It is the email club, and uh, it's basically, uh, you know, basically a free type membership for the Law Abiding Biker podcast and media. I want to stress the importance of the email club, guys. It is the one place, and it does cost me. I have to uh, use a service. Um, uh, of course, I just buy the service, so I'm 
can do these things. They don't do anything for you except allow you to do this. Of course. But I basically, you really need to join the email club. It is the first place, and I, I will not send you spam emails whatsoever. I only send an email out now and then. Um, so, of course, it does cost per year. So if you guys want to donate, we really appreciate that. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash donate to help support these kind of things. It just grows us closer as a community. Um, but again, if you want to join lawabidingbiker.com forward slash email club. And basically what that does is it is your number one source for relevant material. And I, you will be, and, and people that are on it right now that are listening, trust me, they know they get first everything. Um, on that email club, which is completely free to join and it doesn't cost and, and there's no there's no hidden anything. You guys know me by now. We're very transparent here at Law Abiding Biker Media. It's just completely free. It costs me, but it's free to you. Um, and uh, hopefully I can pay for it with donations and stuff. But basically you get first dibs on everything. So when a new free video comes out, you get it days before everybody else. Days before I put it on social media. Days before you'll hear it anywhere else. Um, and also the new for sale items I send you and, and I give you free uh, or I give you the, the special coupon codes, which I did recently on the ride planner. Everybody that's on the email list got a special coupon code, uh, a 48 hour deal where they could get $4 off the new ride planner video. They're the only people. And uh, I will extend it on this podcast. And I will tell you that from the time this podcast releases to uh, 48 hours after this podcast releases, if you order within uh, 48 hours, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash ride planner, and you get the ride planner video, use the uh, code MAPIT, all lowercase M A P I T. Coupon code MAPIT when you order that video, and you'll get $4 off. And that's only good for 48 hours after the release of this podcast. But I will tell you that the email club got it two weeks before you because I, I'll know about when you're listening to this podcast. So you really want to get signed up for the email club. Like I say, there is no spam. I will never sell your name. I will never sell the list. Um, that's not how we roll here at Law Abiding Biker Media. I simply want it um, as a way to get you uh, the really cool, relevant videos, free videos, free content, plus uh, some of the for sale content. So get signed up. Yeah, it's well, easy. You know, it takes you two seconds. For listening audience, the videos are great. And I've watched several of them. And so... you. I've gotten videos. I have a video for my old bike that was made by professional mechanics and they go fast and mm-hmm. they have all the tools. That's the problem. And it's, and or, I've seen some YouTube videos with some not professional mechanics that don't always have all their teeth or fingers. Right. And they, God knows what they're doing. These videos are great because they're just us average bikers kind of muddling through and showing everyone else how to do it. And they're easy to follow. They're absolutely worth it. And this stuff, when it comes out, we're covering the stuff and you're covering the stuff in these videos that guys like you and I want to know about not professional mechanics that build bikes and (laughs) run through it in a hurry, but at a speed where everyone can follow and man, they're indispensable. Very good. And that's some of the feedback I'm getting from people. And, uh, we really appreciate that. And on our YouTube videos, dude, we've got like now I I haven't looked at stats in a couple weeks, but all our videos, the free ones, well over, I think well over 250,000 views. Um, well, and the models you use, a lot of them are really, right. I mean, you know, they make it because, you know, of course. Yeah, no, you know. I'm pretty sure that's not what's happening, but, uh, <laughs> um, well, you bring up a good point. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the videos out there and there's a couple other companies trying to sell them, but they do them in a fashion. Like you say, dude, we do them in the, my garage you know, yeah. with tools that normal people have and we do it hopefully in a way. And I think that's why they've been so successful that we break it down in a way that, Hey, we're just regular bikers and we do this stuff and we're putting it out to you. And I think because we're not, you know, 100% professional mechanics that we, we are able to bring it to a level that everybody can understand. And we aren't talking over, you know, over people's heads. Um, and we've learned along the way. So I think that's why they've been so, and some of those others aren't so successful is, uh, just because it breaks it down to a level of people like, yeah, Okay, that's cool. I get it. I can do that. You know, 
Especially well, if we can do it. People are just going, that jack wagon can do it. I right. Can do it. I mean, <laughs> really, I mean. but they see some two professional mechanics. Look, I've been doing right. it for years. I can't do it. And they got all these specialty tools. And mm-hmm. I, I see a couple oil change videos out there. Guys like, yeah, and you just, uh, there's a couple plugs under there. You take them out. It, dude, they don't show where they, it's just ridiculous. And that's yeah. why I started making these videos, honestly, because I was like, this is dumb. Um, that's not even a video. I can't learn anything from that. So we actually used one of your videos mm-hmm. to install some parts. You did. We made the video on, and you couldn't remember quite I how. Couldn't remember how to do it, and so I sent it to you free, and obviously, was, and we watched it. They worked out great. Yeah. Um. So I will say with that, guys, get signed up for the email club, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash email club. I'm super excited about it. We've already got a ton of subscribers to it, and like I say, it's not an email. Not even every week. Um. Honestly, it's uh. I just send you when there's important stuff. And uh, stuff that, you know, that I think may be relevant or free content. Um, there's been a lot of those that went out free videos. You're the first to get it. So it's free. Get signed up. Worth every free penny. There you go. It takes two seconds for you guys. So, yeah, really appreciate that. Um, what else we got? What else we got here, dude? I'm looking at the, uh, oh. The, 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 the guy. Oh, man, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, hey, real quick, um, since we're completely off track here, did, did we talk recently we're going to make, don't we have some other videos in store that I'm going to make? We do. What 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 are we doing? Because I remind me because I can't remember. I know I talked to you about it. So we're going to be filming some new videos, guys, and uh, and we'll get those out to you too. But all in time, like I said, I, I'm working my tail off here in between my regular job and spending 13 hours, 13 hours a day in the studio here on my days off. But it'll slow down. I'm Maybe. finally at a, I've, I finally got a good workflow going. You can sleep when you're dead. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I, meantime... I'll nap for you. I will tell you before you answer that real quick, keep that in in, in mind because I do want to talk about that. Guys, I told you, I think it might have been last episode, but and it'll probably be something we talk about on our anniversary episode. You guys are awesome. And we're to the point now and it's, it's, it's humbling and a little bit overwhelming and not overwhelming. Um, No, I, I got a timer, dude. Oh. Yeah, I got a time. What am I running mine for? I don't know. Then? He's trying to whisper, and you guys all heard that in the microphone. He's trying to whisper the time. I didn't even whisper. You, yeah, I know, because that's why I could hear I it showed over the it mic. with the signals. Yeah. The hand signals. That's the studer, or excuse me, studio <laughs> timer. But anyways, we are so busy here, and I'm to the point now, I've, I do have some kind of a workflow going, but we are bombarded with emails and voicemails. And please, please, please keep them coming i at least give you a manual response to each of them i just simply at this point cannot get them all aired on podcasts unless we did a podcast like every four days or something i could get everything in there and we just don't have the time to do that because we don't do this full time but i'm humbled by that i save them all and you'll hear many of them coming up they may be a month two months old but i will get them as many as i can on the podcast, um, just know that that they're they're I, I'm not ignoring you. Um, it's just sometimes they have to fall within a cer- certain topic, and like I say, I'm not going to make two. The other thing is I'm not going to make two three hour podcasts because nobody would listen. Um, we try to keep them at an hour, and so just know, guys, we are just at that point, and it's kind of a turning point for us. Um, I didn't think I would get there uh, in less than a year, but we are there, and uh, I just get. A massive amount of emails, and I'm the only only one right now. I don't have, uh, I haven't been able to hire anybody to help me right now. You need a virtual assistant. I do. Yeah, and I've looked into them, and I probably will go that route eventually. Um, but right now, it's just me, and I do all the video editing and and uh, audio and and everything. So I do respond to you guys, but just know, please don't get discouraged. Please sending them, and I try to put them triage them, so to speak, and put them in a, a order that uh, most important. So they will hopefully get used at some point. It just may be a while after you left it. So anyways, what videos are we making, bro? What are we working on? It's a good um, thing we don't raise because we're off track all the time. Yeah, pretty much, dude. Yeah, uh, pretty uh, much. What what videos are we making, dude? I think we're going to do the auto tuner. Yeah. Power commander and uh, maybe swapping out all the uh, halogen lighting on my bike for LED. Taillights. Very turn nice. signals. Yeah. And the auto tuner goes right with our last episode. Absolutely. Yep. And that was the all about the uh, uh, 
Power Commander Five and the race tuners and all that. So Fuel injection. Yep, it's we are the future. Because did you order it? Did you order your your uh, auto tuner? Not yet. Oh, you're waiting. That's yeah, right. Yeah, here a little bit. And I might do the. Uh, um, oh, the, I, the the thing. Yeah, with the phone. Right, and with you the touch phone. the buttons. And Vance and Heinz. That's it. The Power uh, Pack Three. Vance and Heinz Power Pack Three. FP Three. FP Three. Fuel Pack. Fuel Pack Three. Yep. So you guys uh, listened to last episode. Um, geez, what episode number is this, dude? That'll be episode. This will be episode. 30. Yeah, that that would have been thirty-four. Oh, I was going to say thirty-five. But yeah. And the direct link to that is uh, lawbindingbiker dot com forward slash e Edward Frank Ida Tuners. Who's Edward? E F I. And a boy. Tuners, and that'll be always be a direct link that we can refer people back to. So we've got some exciting videos that we're going to shoot here and the weather's getting hopefully we'll get a little bit better as we move into spring and um yeah and i'm going up to oh did i tell you i'm going up to uh up north to meet uh popeye and mike nice up there and he i forget what he's got going on with his street glide but he's got oh he bought his street glide used right and uh he doesn't have you ever seen in the place of the stereo, they really uh, tried to cut costs, whoever bought it, yeah. and they didn't get the stereo put in it. Ooh. So it's got a, where the stereo goes, it's just got a, uh, like a compartment. A glove box. Right, yeah. right. Like an open glove box. Yeah. So Mike, I believe, is purchasing or has purchased. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. You're confusing the listening audience. Huh? Are you talking about Mike or Popeye? No, I'm talking about Mike. Mike doesn't have a street glide. He's got a... Uh, Electric glide standard, totally different. Oh, the street glides come with stereo. I yeah, the you're standard, right. The standard doesn't come with stereo. You're right. It's my bad. I know it happens every day. Yes. <laughs> so he has yeah. So he doesn't have a stereo. So we're going to. Uh, I think he's either bought it or he is going to purchase it. But we're going to put a stereo in his bike. Not nice. speakers too. Yeah. It oh, comes, the slots are there. Right. But they're covered up. Exactly. And speakers. And also the original reason he was going to take it. He needs to adjust his handlebars. Oh right. And I, I did an outer fairing, and that's law abiding. It's free, lawabidingbecker.com forward slash outer fairing. And that's how to remove your outer fairing. Mm-hmm. But we haven't done one, which is very involved. The inner fairing is a pain in the. Yes. Arse. And that will be a for sale video, but Ooh. a lot of people have requested it. But we're going to video. I'm going to I'm gonna record the whole thing. You guys going to take apart the ignition and stuff too? Everything. That is a. Wow. Everything. That's a pain. I know. Wow. But we're going to buy it. that video because yeah. it's a it, man. I read, I had the service manual and I read all about it. Yeah. And after page two, I got a headache quit. You should go up there with me. All right. Yeah. You go up there with me because I'm going to need guys to work on it because I'm going to have to actually video this one because it's going to be very intense. But to remove that outer fairing, you've got to remove all your gauges, the interfering gauges, wiring, the switches, um, everything. And there, there's some nuances to the ignition switch. Okay. Well, good. Then we'll have you along. His is an 08. I don't remember. I've got the service manual. For, I think my 06 will cut co- the service manual will cover his 08. Yeah. Cause it's, it's super involved. It is. Like it that's is a mess in there. That's why guys uh, wanted this video. And obviously that one's going to take, that'll be another, uh, 60 hours. Oh um, yeah. So I, don't, I, I think you might be underestimating I, it a little bit. Yeah. It's a mess in there. It is. So we will be doing that guys. So look forward to that, but that won't be for some time, but we will get that out. Cause a lot of guys have requested that cause it is very involved, but uh, we can handle it, and we will do it for you guys. So, yeah, those are a couple of things to look forward they to. They might have to donate for my headache after that because... Well, we'll have plenty of Frosties up there to... Uh, oh, wow. We won't be getting no headaches. Dude, have you heard this? Of course you did, because I think I told you about it, dude. It is freaking awesome, dude. This this writing, a hearty to heaven, bro. Dude, that guy is awesome. Hang on. Um, he is awesome. And I believe he was awesome, dude. We just need to have a moment of silence. Everybody bow your head. This is a law biting biker podcast. Quiet moment. Breathe. There you go. Exhale. And that is. There you go. That is uh, in respect for our beloved. Oh, that's great. Our beloved. That is great. Harley Ryder that rode his bike 
straight through the pearly gates into heaven, bro. Yeah. I saw the pictures. Dude, you got... It was awesome. Okay, you got... This is a... If you guys have not seen the story, it is funny. I mean, uh, obviously, all respect to the guy um, there, but it's... uh, We're going to talk about it, but this guy... And I'm going to embed this YouTube video on this podcast episode. So lawbitingbiker.com forward slash and the episode number. You can get all the show notes. What kind of show notes do I do here? Thorough show Uh, notes. No. What kind of show notes do I do here? Good ones? Copious. Oh, jeez, Louise, I'm not used dude! To the whole scripted thing, and LD had that word, and it was so big. And no, I, 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 I use that you, word, that's dude. Right, that's right. You started. Sorry. And last time we were in here, mm-hmm. Lurch had it, and mm-hmm. so I do copious show notes. So whatever show notes you want, yeah, forward slash in the episode number. But this guy got buried on a Harley Davidson motorcycle, bro. Buried with his hog. Went out in style. So let me play this for you guys real quick, and uh, it's just a real quick YouTube news reel deal, and uh, then we will talk about it. Here we go. The family of an American biker has fulfilled his wish to be buried on his beloved Harley Davidson in a see-through casket. The embalmed body of Billy Stanley from Ohio was taken for one last ride, sitting on his 1967 Electroglide cruiser en route to the cemetery. He could go anywhere on that bike he wanted to. My dad was a man that had the wonderlust. Mourners at the funeral could see the 82-year-old through the plexiglass coffin. Prior to his death, he'd bought three large burial plots next to his wife Lorna. He was known to show off his casket when visitors stopped by his home. Described as a quirky man by his family, they said they understood people's shock at seeing their dead father. However, they wanted to honor his wishes. Dude, so... That's money. (laughs) That is money. Dude, you got to see this video, you guys. Um, When you get a chance, please go to the show notes. He made national news. (laughs) laughing because i'm watching dead. this video it's dude great. um his name is hardly not it's like i'm trying to see the the thing dude it's h-a-r-d-l-e-y or something like that i don't know what they did to here dude let me it's, 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 let me fa- hang on hang on i'm gonna play the video burial plot i'm gonna look at his wife, headstone here hang he on he was known to show off his casket when he's in a plexiglass thing right home. now dude it's awesome described as a quirky man okay his tombstone says standily S-T-A-N-D-L-E-Y. November 16th, 1931. Um, to dis- Wait, no. He's got... I don't understand this, dude. The headstone. July 18, 1932 to December 4th. To- yeah, I don't know, dude. It looks like he's getting buried. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind, dude. Um, he's got multiple people on here. I think they all got buried together like family. Uh, but his isn't his on there yet. But it, it, apparently it's the tombstone says Stanley. That's sweet. He's from Ohio. And yeah, so he got buried on his 1967. And I must say, at least it wasn't like a brand new bike, dude. Oh, yeah. That, that's older than I am. Is that a shovel? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember 60. what year they cut cut off. Um, Man, that is. Yeah. Wow. You guys got to watch this video. So I'm only laughing because I'm not la- that. I'm laughing because uh, it's awkward, dude. Not it's, really. It is. It's freaking cool. It's awkward, dude, because he's, they, they, they took him. They set him upright on it. They did. So he's on the bike. Yes. Dead, embalmed. Yeah. On the bike, and they have a crane, yeah. and they were lowering him <laughs> dude, down. Wait, hang on. You're going too fast. What's he in, though, dude? They they put him in a. Um, a big plexiglass box. Well, they put him on a trailer. Yeah. So they put his. So he's riding through town. <laughs> yes, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm serious. It's it's crazy, dude. And so he's in the uh, he's in the, on the trailer. You gotta watch the video just to understand this. But hopefully we're we're explaining in a fashion that you can understand on the on the podcast here. But so he's on the trailer and the bike set up. He's embalmed. And I I read some more stuff about this about how they had to do this, dude. Because he's got gloves on. Like mittens, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get. That. I didn't see that I much did, detail dude, in the video. I, I, I studied this thing, dude, because it's crazy. It's it's just 
the most bizarre. I don't know if it's cool or not. We're it's t- unique. It's unique. All it's right. It's unique. I, I don't know if it's a cool thing to do or not, but uh, Stanley apparently thought it was cool. And his wife went through with it, but he's got his mittens on the, uh, so they put his hands on the mittens because obviously it's hard to get the fingers all in the gloves. There might not even be fingers in there. <laughs> there might not be fingers. I don't know how this guy died. It doesn't say that. But uh, they, they, they had to tie them all down, dude. Yeah, because uh, he's dead. Right. But they, they you know how these, like, uh, these, uh, I'm sorry if you're out there listening and you do, what do they call those people? Morticians? Yep. Yeah. If you do mortician work, um, because they try to make it look all like normal, dude. Right. When you're dead. But it doesn't look normal. Yeah, you're dead. He's dead. You're dead, dude. I mean. No matter how hard they try, though, they, they take it like an art, dude. So it's like you can't even see the strings and stuff, dude. Right. I don't know if they use fish and twine. But they tied them all down. They tied his hands down so it looks it's supposed to look as normal as possible. He looks like except he's I the, saw it. He looks the, like he's riding the machine. He, 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 except and he's dead. Except he's bouncing around. And that's the funny part when they hit <laughs> a little creepy. When, it is creepy when they hit bumps on that trailer, dude. And he's just his head's bobbing around and stuff, dude. Didn't he have, he had a helmet on? He did. And goggles. And he had the little chin strap thing. Yep. And and he put uh riding glasses on, dude. And it, he, he planned it's bizarre. this out a lot. Quite a bit ahead of time. He did. Yeah. And so it wasn't like spur of the moment. Like he says, like, I'm going to be dead soon. I'm going to hook yeah. it up. And I think a lot of his um, friends, his wife knew he was being serious, but I think a lot of his friends, yeah. when you see some of the newsreels were like, uh, kind of weird that they went through with this. He really did that. <laughs> he really did it. And he don't care. No. Yeah. He's looking um, down going, I did that. So on this video, um, they have him going down on the trailer. It's in the plexiglass so he can be out for show for everybody. It's hitting bumps, dude. And he's leading the pack. He's leading the pack on the trailer, dude. El Presidente. Yeah. And the people, be, the guys behind him, you know, his friends, I don't know if always with a club or whatever, but his riding buddies, dude, are riding right behind him for that last ride, dude. Now, that would be a little creepy. That's when it gets weird, dude, because that's when he's bouncing around and stuff. Okay, and they so. show close-ups of it, dude. And that's where it gets a little bit weird. But, hey. Hey, give him some love. Yeah, props, dude. The fact that he was still riding that bike the day he yes. died. And after the day he died. And it's going in, it's going in the dirt, dude. I wonder if, like, 50, 60 years from now, they'll find that and dig it up and ride it. Now, what do you think the EPA says about that as long as there's no gas in the tank is and that no all oil in the holes didn't we cover that in the previous mm-hmm. yeah we covered the holes yes we did i think it's fine yeah well i'm sure they had to get permits and stuff but um they went through with it and then yeah like uh you say they would they lower them in the yeah the, some of the pictures i saw the whole like plexiglass a, the whole thing the whole the you, whole whatever you call it a plexiglass yeah. coffin um i guess you could call it for lack of a better term but it's mm-hmm. a steel Slash plexiglass structure so you can make sure and see yeah. standily. Oh yeah, three sides top plexiglass. They lowered him. So the video I I actually watched them part of it anyway was them lowering him into the ground. Yes, dude. I, that's not on this one, but it's on another one. He's gonna get crappy gas mileage. Uh, pretty sure. Um, or none at all. None at all. Yeah. So, anyways, props to Stanley for really taking it to the next level. Amen. Can, the, was, do, we, do we have an amen queued up? Uh, no, we don't have an amen. Oh, all nope, right. Amen. Sorry. Amen, Stanley. Yep. So, guys, that is the uh, news story that was awesome that I that I uh, <laughs> pulled out of one of my uh, pulled out of my arse. Know, yeah. He made national news. He it did. was on MSN.com. And- it was on all the big news stations, dude. And uh, I don't know how many people saw it. So, I will uh, share that with you on the uh, show notes that particular video but anyways dude any uh while we're on that topic dude what do you want to you want to be buried dude or what you gonna get cremated bike and everything burn it down really yeah no 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 have you made your plans dude no you need to be a little more prepared why because i don't know dude you should just be prepared i could keel over right now right which is why you're unprepared i'm just saying put me on your bike and bury me what am i supposed you're not going on my bike well it's there it's a 2014 street light you special have thing insurance you. <laughs> Whatever, dude. i rode that bike to the ground you can take your uh ultra classic with you dude it's a limited you jack uh, yeah sorry limited sorry it's ultra no, limited no street guide special but sorry whatever. yeah i'm well, just saying yep but uh yeah you got any special plans dude when you go you got any special plans? What I'm not going to care. I'm going to be speak dead. to me. Well, that's not that's not what your wife wants to hear. 
She wants to, she, she wants you wants to have the, plans. She's already she, asked me, dude. She, we have she already those, asked me. It's called life insurance. Right. She wants that. She <laughs> did tell me that. She, she cares about. Because I'd be better off in a pine box. All right. That was a country song. Sorry. Well, we can put you in a pine box, dude. But uh, um, so seriously, though, you don't have no, did you have no clue? What? Whatever. Really? It doesn't matter. Just no. whatever. Yeah, whatever. All right. It, throw me out in the bushes. Let the coyotes eat me. I don't care. Yeah. It's kind of how I am too, dude. Chain. Whatever. Yeah. Don't bury me on my bike, though. Give my bike to somebody. Really? Let's, yeah, let somebody have it. They can ride it, dude. Can I have it? Can't ride it when I'm dead. Can yeah, I have it, though? You can have it. That's cool. That's fine, dude. That's actually a legally binding contract. As long as, as, yeah, you're right. It's recorded <laughs> and it's around forever. As long as you, uh, um, yeah, uh, let's put the auto tuner on it and some other things. As long as you do that, dude. But yeah, I don't want to be buried with it, dude. No. Can I lower the front end? Yes. Only. Yes. All right, that's sweet. Dude, I'm going to do those LED lights, too. I think I'm going to do that. They're, pretty, they're different on your bike than mine. Uh, Yeah. Because you have the cool back fender. Right. You don't have the little... Like The audience can't see my hands right now. Right. But I'm they poking can't. them out to the side. The T type. I have, that, type. Big, I have yeah. that big light bar in the back. Right. <coughs> yeah. So, all right, dude. What What else? What else we got here? We, we got you, some emails. Oh, and these actually are some pretty involved emails that we can get into a little bit. So we are trying to catch up on the emails, guys. So I think these are some interesting emails that you guys, uh, uh, hopefully we can answer them in a non-confusing type of way. Let's look at, actually, let's do a couple. We've still had the donations rolling in. Why don't you do some donation thanks to those folks? I was set up on the uh, email, so let me get back here. There you go. Let me start with John. Yeah, just uh, yeah, dude, do some uh, we oh, you know what? We need some uh, good music. We need some good music for the uh, yeah. Let's do this. All right, go ahead. Donation, nice. thanks. Donation, thanks. Time. John Olmstead from Plymouth, New Hampshire. Thank you, John. Thanks, John, for your donation. Chris Hewitt, Austin, Pennsylvania. Good donation. Mm, thank you, Chris. Thank <laughs> the next one. I'm sorry, Alan. Alan Craft of Deep Gap, <laughs> North Carolina. Yeah, Deep thank you Gap, for your donation. And North your Carolina, the name yeah. of your city wouldn't be Americans without it. Yeah, that's right. That's Deep right. Deep Gap. We got some of those here. Deep Gap, NC, North Carolina. And of course, if you want to donate and help support us in the email club and and all this free content, lawabidingbarker.com forward slash donate. All right, right back into it. So what do we got up next, dude? You know, I actually just learned that you can push these little pluses and then it's, it makes it stuff go down. You, yeah, dude, that's, yeah. I'm glad you are figuring that out. I was wondering why you're always off track, dude, what? on where we're at. <laughs> yeah, you roll. push, you can, you can, you can expand them. You can. Uh, well, I was pushing the little button on the other side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It doesn't work the same. You want to do emails? Because we're using this particular deal for our club business now, too. I use it for Law Abiding Biker, and we also keep it for notes for our club business. Yeah. yeah you're we're, forcing me into technology, and I'm fighting and screaming against it, but I'll yep. probably figure it out. You are? I good. got mail. What do we got? Yay, I got mail. You want to do the Yay. one from Joe? Uh, Sure. This one came in via the website, and I think it's pretty long. So It came in via website. What comments on what page? Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash twin slash rounds. Oh, that is my free blog and review at forward slash twin slash rounds. Those are the Vance and Hines twin slash rounds. Ton of hits on that video. Ton of comments. Roll with it. I think I'm probably going to uh, maybe abbreviate this a little bit. It's kind of long. Yeah. You, do you uh, um, actually, you know what? You want me to read the whole thing? Well, uh, you know what? Forget about it. I will just have my, uh, I will, you, I'll have my assistant do it. Hang can on. You, can you try it again? Forget about it. Am I reading this right? You already had the cap removed and new headers installed before you swapped out the mufflers? I'm asking because I'd like to change the sound of my 2013 Ultra Classic but do not want to put in the headers right now. The slash rounds sound great on your SG but I'm thinking that's due mainly to the opened headers. I'd love to get rid of the sewing machine sound on <laughs> the stock pipes but not at the cost of remapping right now. There you go. That that's was pretty, my assistant. <laughs> you need to get a female assistant, dude. Sorry. I know, dude. So he's a little creepy. Yeah, basically, what he's asking, right? Why don't you sum that up? He, he's uh, 
he saw the video, my twin slash rounds, and I just put Vance and Heinz twin slash rounds on it. The new, the but new I bikes. put new headers on it, and uh, of course the new headers uh, here in Washington. You know, make but, sure you know. And I'm sorry if you live in California. Uh, I'm really, really sorry for that. Um, we went over this before, but we will in past episodes a little bit, but we will revisit it since the emails here and we're trying to catch up on emails. Um, yeah, he's uh, so on that twin slash round guys, I do show putting the, uh, which is fine here. I put the twin slash rounds on and then I put new headers on which the new headers that you buy from Vance and Heinz, or if you buy from what other companies, there's uh, tons, almost all yeah, of them. The, none of them have, none of them have cat, cat and we, yeah, sorry. Thank you for. We, we're calling it cats, but we're cats short for catalytic converters. So once you answer that, dude, because we actually will refer you back real quick to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash EFI, Edward Frank Ida Tuners. And we talk a lot about the remapping, but why don't you hit on this a little bit? The, the cats aren't really going to change the sound. You're not going to get that much more a air little, out of it. A, a, little. a little bit, but yep. really you can just put slip-ons, the slip-on mufflers on there and, and it's going to sound great. I mean, the... I, when I took my old or my new, but my slip on mufflers off and we did read it by exhaust mm-hmm. and I look through there and you can't see any daylight. And so the mufflers alone will give you the sound you want. A lot of guys, now that the new bikes have O2 sensors, you can change out the mufflers and it's not, you don't have to get it mapped or remapped and you get that sound that you want. And that's what a lot of guys are going for. Cause the new bikes run, they're so vastly different than even my O6. You don't have to do all the stuff to them anymore. You can buy a nice set of slip-ons like the Vance and Hines for people like Vance and Hines and you can uh, and just plug them in and you're good. And it, the, the cats, the biggest thing guys are saying about the cats, catalytic converters, it's going to reduce the heat. Yep. Reduced my heat big time, man. Big time, bro. Big, big time, time, bro. <laughs> you know what movie that came from too, huh? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, and I would refer you about remapping it and all that. Just refer to lawbidingbiker.com forward slash EFI tuners, and we do a whole hour on that. But yeah, um, hopefully we answered that question. Um, you don't need to replace your headers. And real quick, well, you don't need to remap it if you're just putting the slip-ons on. We highly encourage it, but you don't have to. It's not going to make, it's not going to make your ruin it's not gonna hurt your bike yeah it's not gonna blow anything up. it's not gonna hurt anything you can just put slip-ons on if you want slip on mufflers on any harley davidson you don't have to map do nothing it, it's not gonna hurt your bike you just get better performance if you do map it um but like i say refer to that episode my response basically to him was yeah and like what we said cats will improve some sound um but really where they're getting rid of the cats are gonna reduce heat and they're also going to increase performance big time because you're getting more flow yeah i mean okay maybe not big time if you do an intake then getting rid of the cats will give you more airflow so you're putting more air through the motor if you're not gonna do the intake then uh yeah you're gonna notice that big of a difference probably not but the sound and those ridiculously quiet yes he says it sounds like a sewing machine which is awesome it's true and they'd have to do that per federal regulation they have to sell them that way we're lucky up here. Again, lots of guys send me emails. I don't know the laws in every state. I only know them here. And you have to look up your local laws. And uh, if you're California, basically, you're stuck. Just don't ride. No, I'm, I'm teasing. No, we don't come out of your house, <laughs> which you can't afford anyway. Don't breathe. Don't fart. Um, oh, because man. apparently <clears throat> farting is illegal now for mm-hmm. the environment the in California. Oh, yeah. it's huge. The methane gas. So no, I love our California listeners. Uh, met a lot of cool people down there. But you guys, I'm sorry, you have it really bad down there for emissions. I mean, you, my can't, do, you can't do anything. My down lawnmower there. has a California tax stamp. Yeah, it says legal and everywhere in the world, but California. Yep, because I have to have some special muffler on my lawnmower because lawnmowers they cause quite a bit of emissions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I you know all the pipes you buy, I bought pipes and headers and. And every one you buy comes with a huge orange sticker caution. <laughs> California law against California law, this and that. Not any other states listed on there. So Not California legal for use in California. And that's what I'm like, thank God I don't live in California, dude, because my bike would. And that's what's crazy, dude. I've emailed back and forth some people, is uh, which is a whole other subject, which is what we're really good at. Um, but I don't understand that, dude, because I can ride my bike through like most of the United States and be perfectly legal. And then I go into California and I'm not. 
you know, and how do I know what every state? Well, I just went back and forth with a retired officer about this really nice emails, but it's so stupid, dude. I don't understand how I can't, and I'm law enforcement, dude, understand all the emissions laws in each state and my bike's legal here, but hopefully they take that into account. Um, you know, I would, what are they going to do? If somebody the- here was out of state and I got their license, I'd be like, okay, you know, you hope- get to the border. They don't let you in. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Yeah. Turn around. Right. Right, yeah. your pipes aren't legal. Yeah, exactly. You're getting 45 miles a gallon. That yep. doesn't matter. That's too much emissions. Right. Oh, yeah, all the care, but we've talked about that in past episodes too. Yeah. Huh. Can don't, you see that guy over there choking? Your bike's killing that guy. Right, it's killing that guy, but we're, you're only getting 30 miles a gallon. Don't worry about the gas. <laughs> all right, enough of that. Let's move on. Why don't you move to the next e- email? <laughs> Rick from Europe. Don't get me started on the whole ethanol. I know, dude. Just- we, no, we have an old episode on that in E15. On ethanol? Yeah. Me and you are going to do that episode because I'm... I've researched it quite a bit, and I know you have too. I have a whole episode ready for E15. So if you guys want to hear that, and I know a lot of guys know what we're talking about, um, there's a lot of controversy. Corn's killing the country. Yes. See, that's a whole other episode. Uh, so we're going to do an right. episode on E15 and the controversy that surrounds that, but not this episode. So what is Rick? Rick this is awesome. Europe. Rick from Europe. And we have listeners all over the world, and that's, I get these emails. I just want to throw this one in there. That's amazing. He says, hey, guys, just wanted to thank you for the great videos. Bought my first Harley of Fat Bob a while back and love it. Love Great the Fat ride. Bob. Originally from Western Washington, the wet side, but now a little Which over is in Western Europe. Washington State, yeah. <laughs> on our west west of us, about two hours. Your videos are very popular on this end. Just wanted to tell you thank you once again and keep up the great work. Thanks, Rick, from Europe. Thank That's you, amazing. Rick. I know, isn't that awesome, dude? I get emails like this all the time, and I'm just like, and like I said, guys, I'm sorry I can't, but I just wanted to read that one real quick just because uh, it's awesome oh, that we cool. have. From Europe. That we're big in Europe. Yeah. That's just so, I, I can't comprehend that, actually. I, I don't know what to say about that, dude. But It's a continent. It's like east. Because look at this little podcast studio we're sitting in. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Just you and I, dude, chilling. It is. It is. Some it, guy in Europe right now, or, well, not right now, but later is going to be like, hey. Right. And, uh, yeah, dude. It's just the two of us. And we got the fireplace going. We got the fireplace going. And we got going. the two of us. <laughs> it's just not <laughs> right. Dude. <laughs> But it is, dude, is, you know, and we're going to talk about a lot of this on the, the, the one year anniversary episode will likely be at least an hour and a half, but we'll talk about that. Just, I can't really wrap my head around because we can sit in a small studio, do this podcast and you forget that it's really easy to forget until I get all these emails from people that I, and I've met so many cool people that are now friends with me on Facebook and stuff. Um, these, uh, friendships that I've never even met these people, but they're just really genuine, and we forget just how from this small little studio in this little town, dude. Here uh, in central Washington. Yeah, in central Washington that we can, uh, it's not a small town, but yeah, you know, it's not huge. Um, that we can, that we are, you know, being listened to in Europe and Ireland and, you know, the, the different continents and stuff. It's just. That's amazing. It is. And so I like to read emails like that once in a while. We do get a lot of those, um, but I just wanted to read that one real quick. So why don't we move on? We're doing good on time. Oh, one of our favorites, one of our favorites from Ireland sends, sends us an email. John O'Keefe. Wait a minute. Did you skip one? Nope. Oh, did I? Yeah. Hang, hang on. Hang on. Stand by. Stand by. Don't forget Michael Allen. Oh, he's last, dude. Oh, you got, oh see, he's third on mine. Um. Oh, yeah. You're right. My bad. Why don't you? Wait, yeah. wait, wait. That happened twice today. It did. You're Can right. You repeat that? Yep. You're right. Uh, oh, it's already recorded. Everybody. We're good. Oscar's right. There you go. That a boy. All right. Um, go ahead. Why don't you... Now, this is going to take a little bit to answer, so go ahead. Do you want my assistant to read it, or do you want to? Um, you better have your assistant read it. Are you sure? I mean, I can read it sort of good. All right. This is from Michael Allen, and I don't know no off location. the top of my head. Yeah, I don't... Sometimes I don't have a location. Um, just depends uh, how they fill out the form. But all right, here we go. Here's my assistant. This is about... This is via a general contact on our email, and it's reference uh, pipes, which is kind of the theme we're on today for some reason. But uh, yeah, we are on the theme of pipes. And again, if I you want Normally, we don't talk about another dude's pipes. No, we don't really want to get into that. <laughs> um, but this is our general contact, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact forward slash email. Um, here we go. Go ahead. Take it away, assistant. First of all, Good job on the Street Glide special videos. I am picking mine up in June and your videos are awesome. I have a fat bob with Vance and Heinz big radius 2 into 2. 
I love the sound of them. I am looking for a pipe combination for my new street glide and am looking at the Vans and Hines powered duels in black. I am also looking at the Vans and Hines blackout rounds or the Renhardt 4 inch rounds. Do you have any experience with this combination? I am looking for stereo compatible pipes that do not sacrifice much of the loud pipe design like that of the big radius. Would like the big shot duels, but they do not offer it in black for the 2014 touring models. Thanks for your time. And my response real quick to that guy is basically what he's asking is, you know, a whole bunch of different pipe combinations. And he's obviously seen um, the uh, twin slash duels video that we talked about a little bit earlier in the episode. Uh, I, basically, I ran the Vance and Hines True Duels. I'll tell you guys, I ran the Vance and Hines True Duels on my 2011 Harley Street Glide. They were big I, shots, the mufflers. Hmm? Weren't they big shots? No, they call them True Duels now. They used to call them big shots. They're called oh. True Duels. Yeah, same thing. So if you have an older now, now they call them. They don't have the big shots anymore. They call them the the true duels. If it, uh, but that's what they were called when I ordered them. Um, I had those on my 2011 Street Glide, and I didn't have any problems hearing my stereo. Wait, wait, wait. We're gonna Michael. Get... Michael. Yes. Don't ask. Don't ask Ryan about <laughs> how his pipe sounded. Ask those who rode behind him. That's go ahead, dude. Because we couldn't hear. But, our I, but I heard the stereo fine. He I heard hear his stereo, stereo just fun. fine. I couldn't hear. I could have got hit by a hurricane. I wouldn't have heard it coming. That was great. Yep. Um, um, that was probably the only time that uh, LD got mad because he couldn't hear his songs, dude. Yeah, and the rest of the world can hear his music. Right now. Unless he's riding behind you. Right. <laughs> Amen. Just for you, LD. Um, okay. Loaded question. I did run the True Duels on my 2011 Harley Street Glide, which are basically just straight pipes. Um, they do have a baffle in them and stuff. I had the baffle in, but I heard my stereo fine because it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to tell you this straight up. Here's really quick to answer this email. It doesn't matter how loud the pipes are. It's not going to affect you hearing your stereo because the sound is behind you. As long as poor rat people behind you, that's who it affects is the people behind you and beside you. I had the loudest pipes and uh, I've had, uh, Vance and Hines, uh, what are they? Big radius. Oh, those are so loud. Okay, it 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 either wraps out to the side or behind. Unless your pipes are coming out in front of you, you're going to hear your stereo fine. Right. I go down the freeway at seventy, not a problem. However, the people behind me, my left, couldn't ears hear their themselves. Got significant think. hearing loss now. <laughs> they couldn't hear themselves think, and they couldn't hear their stereos. So, when I got this. I did feel sorry for them, dude. They sounded awesome. And man, they set off car alarms like crazy, (laughs) dude. You couldn't ride through town. Especially when we went to bigger cities, dude. When we went to Seattle and Spokane and Oregon and and places like that, dude. You go through the cities. Oh, my God. They just... When we rode through... That was insane. That was Anaconda, Montana. And yours was the only bike they heard. But everyone stopped. Because we could hear your bike. They did, dude. And that's not even revving it. When I revved it, it was just bouncing off the walls and stuff. It's Um, insane. So... I decided to go with the uh, uh, twin slash rounds, Vance and Hein twin slash rounds. They give a nice throaty um, sound. Um, they sound, they do. They just sound they hot. They sound good. Yep, they, they do, do. but they're not obnoxious. And the so, Reinhardt, I've got a buddy with an yeah, 07 uh, Road King Custom with the Reinhardt 4 inch, and they sound great. And they're not they're not obnoxious. They, they're they deep. They rumble. The, man, the Reinhardts are great. Reinhardts do make a good pipe. And so I'll tell you, um, Michael, that, Trust me, if you get the twin slash rounds, anything you're talking about, any of those are very comparable to the Vance and Heinz twin slash rounds. They're all, you know, good throaty sounding, um, hardy sounding, um, you know, the V twin sounding pipes that are really going to bring it out. Um, and especially when you get into higher RPMs, but they're not ever going to be obnoxious for um, people to ride with you. And truth be told, my twin slash rounds um i actually by doing the true duels that were pretty much opened up without mufflers actually robbed me of performance it will what say you yeah, absolutely you're Ex- pushing, explain that you're pushing the, um on a gas motor car bike whatever requires a certain amount of back pressure on the exhaust and it has to do with the intake and the, with the valve intake and the exhaust intake or the, with the <laughs> intake valves 
and the exhaust valve opening and closing. So um, a lot of the tuners, all the stuff I've read, a lot of the tuners don't like mm-hmm. true duels. Cause it, Which are basically straight pipes with a little it, metal baffle. Right. And so you guys know what we're talking about. They're hard to tune, and they push out too much. They don't have enough back pressure. There you go. They're they're tough. They're tough to tune, and they will, they'll take away a lot of your low end. Now at the high end, when the pistons are really moving, <coughs> you'll be fine. And that's what race bikes have. A lot of race bikes have true duels, and they're running at the like 4,800 to 6,800 RPMs. But for your average cruising bike like we ride, true duels are tough. I went to it with a two into one for that very reason, which is the exact opposite. You did. did. And they actually, the two into ones are really hot on performance. Um, I just prefer the looks, me personally, of the, the two coming out the back. But you give up some performance for looks. For the true duels. And that's why Harley, right. Harley actually, their new exhaust setup is a two into one. So it goes two into one, and then they pop out the pipe. Right, they go into a chamber. Right, mm-hmm. and they did that for a reason because it produces the a back little pressure. bit more torque than horsepower. So if you want horsepower for riding a Dyna or some of the soft tails light bike, and you really just ride on the red line all the time, True Duel is great. But if you're riding a heavy bike, touring bike, or some of the like the Heritage, where you want a little bit more low end, the two into one or the two into one to two. I think Reinhardt's going to a two into one to two. So is Vance and Hines. Because they, they just produce a little bit better low end. Yep. So I would suggest not getting the big shot duels just for your friends. If you ride with friends, if you ride by yourself, who cares? And uh, But also just for the performance factor. And uh, um, I'll tell you that, yeah, definitely more performance. And to, to hit on what Oscar was talking about real quick, and we're going to wrap this episode up, is uh, what he's talking about, the stock Hardy pipes. They do, they're two into one into two. And they did that. So they go two, one out of, uh, excuse me, one out of each head. And then uh, they go into a chamber and they combined. It's one big pipe at that point, And then, bam, they split it back underneath the bike. Basically, right where it pops underneath by your rear tire, they split it back into one pipe out the left and one pipe out the right. And they strictly do that performance. Did I explain that okay, Oscar? Fantastic. All right, so, and the two videos that he's referencing is uh, the free videos that uh, Michael is referencing that he was talking about in here is lawbindingbiker.com slash twin slash rounds and slash 2014 street glide special. Those are both free, the 2014 street glide special complete review that's got a ton of hits and the twin slash rounds. So check those two free videos out and blogs, guys. And Michael, thank you for contacting us. And I really hope... uh, I hope that uh, helped you. Last email, I'll s- just tell you real quick, and we're going to get out of here. And that is John O'Keefe from Ireland, of course, big supporter of the show, has donated, sends emails, and uh, stays in touch. But for you guys that are bitching about expenses here in the United States, this is wow. a little slap in the face for all, us all that uh, think we have it rough. He says, just listen to your latest podcast. Great show. Just a little info for you. As you know, I just got a 2014 Street Glide. Unfortunately, in Ireland slash Europe, we don't get the six inch boom box infotainment uh, with satellite and, or navigation and all that. We can only buy the regular Glide. and ha- So they can only buy the regular Street Glide with the smaller one. And they have to buy the special fairing as an aftermarket part, um, which is 2600 US dollars. Insane. So. We just, you know, we bitch a lot around here and we just, in the United States, we got it. We really, we really do. We, we got to just shut our mouth sometimes, right. dude. Yeah, it's a little humbling. Though. It is. It is humbling. And that's what I like about hearing this stuff from all these people from all over the world. For us to get, and he goes on, for us to get your boombox system, we need to buy the ultra madness double exclamation point. He says, keep up the good work. So if you guys think uh, you got it rough, well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> if you're listening here in the, in the, in the United States. Um, Wasn't it Denmark a, a brand new Harley cost like? 75,000 or whatever. Um, he actually, it's a past episode, but I can't remember. John O'Keefe told us what yeah, it, it was, cost, but it, it was Ireland, insane. But there was, a, you, I thought we had another one like Sweden or something. It was insane. I don't remember now, but we very uh, well may have. Um, anyways, guys, thank you so much. We went a little over an hour. Get ready for the year anniversary <laughs> podcast episode. Um, thanks so much for tuning in and uh, hope it was uh, informational. Always entertaining. We hope it was entertaining. Infotational. Infotational. That's right, guys. Don't forget to sign up for the email club, law, uh, email club, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash email club. Our hotline phone number where you can leave a voicemail message, which we are stacking up and we're going to get to them. 509-731-3548. 
or internet voicemail right from your computer microphone, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash voicemail or voice message. Of course, email or contact lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact. Yep, get in that email club, guys. You will get the special coupon codes. And again, 48 hours from from, uh, when this is released, I'm going to make myself some notes. 48 hours from this is released, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash ride planner, the brand new Harley Davidson ride planner video. I show you screenshots. I show you how to do it. I take you out to my Harley. We upload it into the boombox system. Or if you have a supported external GPS device, I show you how to do that too. Get signed up. Uh, Actually, the uh, coupon code for that, 48 hours from the release of this episode, and it will be closed. Coupon code, lowercase, map it. Mary Adam, Paul, Ida, Tom, map it is where you need to go. Of course, don't forget to uh, rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, lawbindingbiker.com forward slash iTunes forward slash Stitcher Radio. Thank you so much. Keep the rubber side down. Shiny side up. Roger that. We're out. Thank you for listening to the Law Abiding Biker Podcast. Please listen to our next episode.